First off, give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yashai. Give honors to the elders and apostles, GMS. Salute and honors to the elect, the brothers who are enduring this truth and sincerity. You know, we got a, another sit down today about the uh, Republican National Convention here next week. Because you got two groups of people who are on opposite ends of the spectrum who are planning to be there armed. So this first article we're going to get, which is from the New York Post, says New Black Panther Party will be armed during the RNC protest, which is the Republican National Convention. The chairman of the New Black Panther Party, a black power movement, says... His group will carry arms for self-defense during protests at the Republican convention next week, if allowed, under Ohio law. If it is an open state to carry, we will exercise our Second Amendment rights because there are other groups threatening to be there that are threatening to do harm to us, Hashim Nazinga said, uh, chairman of the New Black Panther Party, told Reuters in an interview. Um, if that's if that state allows us to bear arms, the Panthers and the others who can legally bear arms will bear arms. And Zinga condemned, uh, condemned the killing of five police officers in Dallas last week uh, as a massacre, saying his group played no role in that attack. Which, you know, we believe that it's a false flag attack. But we also, well, me personally, I believe that the new Black Panther Party is set up just like uh, the old Black Panther Party was set up, just like Black Lives Matter is set up. You know, all these groups, they, they get funding from uh, the elites, George Soros and, you know, all these um, top-end companies. You know, it just came out that uh, Black Lives Matter got, you know, over $100 million worth of funding for, you know, their group. How do you get that? You get it because you sponsored by them elites, you know, because it's all part of their agenda to push the race war, which feeds right into the prophecy, and which is all everything is done by the will of you know the Most High. Officials in Ohio have said it will be legal for protesters to carry weapons at demonstrate at demonstrations outside the convention under the state's open carry laws. Several other groups, including some supporters of presumed Republican presidential nominee. Donald Trump has said they will carry weapons in protests as well, leading to concerns of our rival groups being armed in close proximity. So that that goes into the second article, which is uh, from MotherJones.com. Says Trump delegates uh, were bringing guns to Cleveland as the Republican convention in Cleveland approaches. Several delegates from Pennsylvania who support Donald Trump say they're planning on bringing their guns with them. To the GOP gathering. Uh, why? They say they are worried about possible violent protests and even an attack from ISIS. James Klein, a pro Trump delegate from Harrisburg area, notes that guns won't be needed inside the convention hall and that delegates won't be allowed to bring weapons in. But he adds, there are hotels and there's going to be dinners. So Klein, an insurance executive and economist, has decided to come armed to Cleveland, and he has urged his fellow delegates to do the same. We're talking about ISIS, he remarked, citing the recent shootings in Orlando and bombings at the Istanbul uh, airport, referring to protesters outside the Trump rallies, he has, we're talking about people who have shown the propensity for violence. So you know he's talking about Jake. You know, even though the so-called white man has been violent to the whole world for the past 500 years. You know, he feels threatened by us, so he's going to carry his guns. Which he should. Because, like I said, the Panthers going to have their guns, they're going to bring their guns, and that's the perfect storm for a race war to stop right there. And not only that, on July 1st, they passed uh, executive orders for the UN peacekeepers to basically kill U.S. civilians under so-called, um, what's the word I want to use, uh, self-defense and to, to keep the peace. They can kill civilians to keep the peace, basically, and they, and they save other civilian lives. But that's all, that's really what it's going to boil down to, 
is this race war going to build up for martial law? And, you know, is, is prophecy coming to pass at the end of the day? That's what this is all about. That's, that's going to be the end game with this. And, you know, you still got terrorists from the outside because the World War Three is building up with Russia. Russia is threatening nuclear war. North Korea is threatening war. China, you know, China's uh, currency, you know, is about to make a big splash on the international scene, which is going to help to upset the dollar, which is going to crash the U.S. economy. You know, so all these things are happening all at the same time, building up and, you know, snowballing, um, like a snowball going down the hill, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So all these things I just said, you know, Russia, China, uh, Korea, and all these other countries, you know, these are all, and the race war, you know, these are all wars and rumors of wars. But the end is not yet. This is just the beginning. This is, you know, the, the, the birth pains. Slakia. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So, you know, it says it's gonna be it says it's gonna be a famine. So, you know, with the economic downturn and with all this, you know, um racial bullshit, you know, if if, if a civil war breaks out or a race war breaks out, you know, it's going to be a lot of looting. If it's looting, then, you know, that could cause a famine because it's not going to be, you know, any food in the stores or the stores will be on lockdown or, you know, people be in their stores with, with guns. Like if you run in here, you know, you're going to get shot. So that could start a famine, which also could start a pestilence because, you know, if you, if you don't have adequate, uh, adequate first aid or if you're not able to, to get to a hospital safely you know disease can start running rampant or like I said with North Korea because North Korea is also you know uh, mad at the United States for putting sanctions on them and they got the EMP they send that EMP over here and then then what that's famine and pestilence Earthquakes in diverse places, you know, they have they've been having a lot of earthquakes on um on the the west coast of South America. You know, it's it's been a lot going on. This thing is speeding up, man. These these prophecies are coming to pass, and this is real life. A lot of people don't. Everybody think it's a game. This is real life, man. Hitting you in the face. Prophecies straight up the Bible coming to pass right in front of your eyes. This is Micah chapter 5, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as the dew of as the dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts in the forest of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep. Who, if he go through, both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and none can deliver. That's how Jake's gonna be in these days. Said like a young lion in the forest in the midst of sheep. So what you, what, what you think them sheep gonna do? They gonna get towed? <laughs> they gonna get towed? You know, tore apart. That's how it's gonna be. But you, Jake's gonna get your hand, your ass handed to you too, because you're not covered by Yahweh by Shimei or Shai. And I got one more scripture, and you know we're gonna we're gonna call it a day. This is Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse fourteen. Woe unto the world and them and them that dwell therein, for the for their it's like for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, 
and swords in their hands. That's that's a race war, man. That's destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. That's you know, that's not talking about the world of Israel, the elect of Israel, should I say. That's talking about, you know, the people who are still carnally in the world. The two thirds, the heathens, the wicked, all of them, you know, destruction's coming to them. And it says one people should stand up to fight against another. That's those two opposing forces that we talked about at the beginning of the video. You know, Jacob versus Esau. That's This is a real life thing we've been battling since the womb. You know, and it's going to come to a head in a real life race war here in America. It says, therefore, there should be sedition among men and invading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So, you know, don't make, in that time, nobody's going to care what the law has to say. With the so-called boys in blue, with the, the military, with the president, the senator, the governor, the speaker of the house. None of that's going to matter. They're going to get down. And then they're going to, then... Matter of fact, I, I got to get this because, you know, it, it definitely goes with it. And this is one of my, my favorite scriptures. This is uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 59, verse 19. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory. It's like in his glory from the rising of the sun. when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So, you know, when they try to bring them, them stormtroopers in, the martial law, like a flood, what does a flood do? A flood overtakes you. It's an overwhelming force. So when Jake rises up like a, a young lion, they they going to need that overwhelming force to come in. When they use that overwhelming force, that's when the spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him. And that's the prophets getting spiritual powers and getting down. And then that's they turn to, you know, to get busy in this place, so to speak. Well, like I said, while everything else is going on around them, the famine, the pestilence, World War III, the race war, the, the concentration camps, people being chipped, the, economic, the, the economy crashing. All this is going to be going on at one time. It's called Jacob's Trouble. And we're going to be delivered out of that, Lord willing. The elect will be delivered out of that. Lord willing, I'm a part of it. Lord willing, you're a part of it too if you listen to this video. But in order for us to get out of that, we got to do what? We got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to our best abilities. We got to pray. We got to read, watch. We got to have faith above all. And you know, just man, just do what you gotta do to get out of here. Cause that's the main goal. You know, fuck all that other BS, man. Anything else that's that's slowing you down from this truth, man, you gotta cut it off. Whether it's a, a woman, a child, a parent, you know, it's it's hard. But you you just gotta do what you gotta do to get out of here. That's the main point. With that being said. Give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yashai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS. Salute and honors to the elect, the brothers in his truth that endure with insincerity. Also, the women and the children who follow them. Shalom.